Okay. Video Ask is a tool that I have hired as part of my own personal digital team. So I'm going to show you exactly what goes into it. I do have a list of questions from one of my PBKers, and I am going to be going through those questions to guide us. And so you can really see where people had questions and what my answers to those questions are. So First off is how user friendly is Video Ask? I would say Video Ask is very user friendly. So I'm going to click in, I'm going to log in. Once you have your account, it is part of Typeform. I do also use Typeform, but these two at the moment do not do what I would call talking to each other. So this is my video ask dashboard and I do use this in various places. Video ask for me feels like a clone. It allows me to create both decisional tree questions in terms of, hey, I'm asking you a question. Would you like A, B or C? Oh, you chose C. You would get a different response than if you chose A, but it really lets me do it from a single dashboard. So in a set period of time, max on a very busy day for me would be 20 minutes. More often, it is a five minute action. In Video Ask, when it comes to how user friendly is it, what I wanna show you is how to make a Video Ask. So you click this button, which says New Video Ask, and you're going to name it. So we will name this one. I'm gonna use all caps just so my capitalization doesn't drive me nutty. And I'm gonna say Testing Video Ask. Then you do have these little question marks. So the question marks are good. They're their help bubbles. You can hover over them. You can click over to read more. I would say video asks help information is good. Here it says customize your contact form later in the settings tab. But collecting client details, I have learned this the hard way collect the information at step number one. When we walk through, the reason for this is if you have, say, four questions and you're collecting the contact info at step number three, if the person doesn't do it, you literally will get responses that a human submitted, a human left an answer. Guess what? You can't reply to a human. So the point of video ask is to be able to reply to the humans. So collect that information at step number one. I collect this information now at step number one with everybody on all of my different paid offerings. So whether it is a free offering or behind the paywall, I collect at step number one. Then you click this button, create the video ask. Then it asks you, how would you like to create this step? So I can do a screen share. I can upload a video that I've made from somewhere else. I can go into my library or I can use the webcam. So it gives you lots of choices in terms of what you want to do. For purposes of this video, I'm going to use the webcam so that you can see it in action and it will record right as I'm talking to you. So oh, apparently we need to flip our hair. There we go. We're going to hit record. It gives you a countdown and then you just talk. So you can say whatever you want on your video ask. I tend to keep my finger right over the red dot where the mouse is so that I can still look at the camera and when I'm done I can just um, click and the then button you just talk. and it'll say so you can there it is say whatever you want on your video ask I tend to keep my finger right over the red dot where the mouse we're going to click yes it will allow you to watch the entire clip if you don't like it click no and then it will give you the option to do it again. So if you are good at impromptu and just speaking to the camera, the webcam is very, very easy. If you've already put something together, then you could use the library option, you could upload an option, and you can screen share. 
Now, the overlay text here, I don't tend to use this. So I could put text here and say, um, this is just me testing video ask, like that, and that's how it would display. So you can layer over, and it has a link here to put in variables. This is where I'm saying the help desk is, I find, user friendly. I don't get very fancy though in video ask. I keep it rather simple. Simple is smooth, smooth is fast. So if you wanna do something really fast and really slick, keep it simple. So you can put stuff in there, I don't tend to. You can also darken it, you can fit to video. So this fit video, this is helpful when I've uploaded a video. So if I've, for instance, recorded something with uh, ScreenFlow, which is what I'm using right now to record this video, you have a recording from Zoom, you have a recording from Loom, which is another program that I really like. This makes the video fit in the screen. So if it's looking a little funky, just play around with the fit to video. In this instance, because I was recording straight from the webcam, I can just leave it as is. I'm gonna click continue. It'll give it a few minutes. It will do its work. This is what Video Ask will show you as you're creating the experience for your viewer. Now, you can keep this very, very simple. So when I am using it in a product or on a sales page, in an email, on a site, you can get fancy. If you have an established audience, if you know why you're segmenting and you understand that segmenting creates exponentially more work for you, by all means, go fancy, go crazy. I will be living proof that you can have astronomically successful businesses that are honestly very simple. You don't have to do all these crazy automations and all these crazy big builds. So my recommendation is start simple, get your feet underneath you. So here it's just giving me a preview and it says title. So I could put in, if I was keeping track of, um, welcome to my course. So let's say you wanted to have a video ask that was on the thank you page after they've purchased, maybe right inside the product as a welcome message, maybe inside an email sequence after the purchase. It can be the same video ask and you can just label it welcome to my course. This is why it feels like a, I have cloned myself when I'm using this program. Here, the answer, you now have the choice. So you can do all of these choices right here, okay? You can play with all of them. I'm not going into showing you how to use all of those because I don't even use all of those. Open-ended is what I use 90% of the time and I can choose how I would like people to respond. So as you're looking at this, if you're trying to think, well, I don't know, should I do one? Should I do two? Should I do three? I always think from the perspective of my customer, I don't know what they want. And so I typically leave all of these on. If you are doing something where you only want video, then turn off audio and text. I turn them on because that just feels polite and respectful of the person on the other end. They might not be able to reply via video. They might not be comfortable replying via video. And the reason I'm using Video Ask is to serve them, meet their needs in a way that is respectful of them, respectful of their time, and respectful of their preferences. So I tend to leave those as they are. You can change the time limit here, and I think it's 300, but it'll yell at me if I make it too much. So if you typed in 400, yep, it'll tell you, nope, it's too long. So I 
I use the full amount. Again, I don't do anything fancy. I keep it really easy, um, which you've been on the receiving end of some of mine. They're not fancy. This is that contact detail. Yes, collect the contact info early or you will get some humans. You'll still get some humans, but they'll only make it to the first part of the question versus they might think, oh, I've answered four questions and Tamsin's gonna get back to me, but they don't fill out their name and email, so I have no way of contacting them. So I can click the contact form. It will let me edit this form. It's very, very easy. If you change your mind, you can flip it to a different step. The steps available will populate in this drop down. So again, to me, this is a very straightforward. I can click that X to get out of it. I'm gonna open it back up and I'm going to say done. Then that's it. So that is the entire simple video ask. I use this in products and it's a simple, how can I help message, which I totally stole from the NBC, I think it's NBC, uh, New Amsterdam show, the metal, medical director on that TV show. He walks around saying, how can I help? And I have found that in these last couple years with the pandemic, I people have decision fatigue. And so I don't need to ask them 15 questions to sort them out. I can just simply show up and say, how can I help? And then I can automate from there depending on what they are sharing with me. Now that you have your video ask, now you've got to put it somewhere. So to do that, you go back to your inbox and here it says testing video ask. The build is what we just walked through here. You can connect this to other apps. So if you are a fellow fan of Zapier, you can connect to other places. This is the share and the embed. So if I click this link, this plays so well with Kajabi. It plays well inside Kajabi products. It plays well on pages. It plays well in email, Kajabi email. So you can just use the URL and it can be a call to action anywhere that we have a CTA function. The email aspect, I use this in my emails. You click send to multiple people, you copy this code, and you place this code inside a Kajabi email text block. And I will show you what that looks like. All right, we're inside Kajabi and I'm showing you the email portion. So underneath marketing, if you're under your email campaign, you're going to create a new email, say that it's a broadcast. It will work in broadcasts or email sequences. Here you can um, use one of your saved templates or use a Kajabi template. I'm going to start with just a basic Kajabi template. And I'm going to call this video ask testing. And the nice thing is you can save this. So I know that the saving template feature has not rolled out to all accounts yet, but it is in the process of rolling out. So keep your eyes peeled. If it's not on your account yet, it will be shortly. So here I can just put in video ask testing see what it does. <laughs> uh, this is the button that I'm referring to, this save as template. I do have this on my account. I am a founder. So if you don't have this yet, it's coming soon. Edit content. So this would work great. And we had some questions on use cases. Um, let's see, welcome video to new Facebook group members, follow up with attendees of events. So Yes, this would work well any time that you're using events, you're using courses, you're using assessments. Anytime you might be using email, you can use this feature. So I'm gonna add a section. I'm gonna go to the text block, 
click add. I'm going to click on the two little carrots. I copied that code from Video Ask, and I'm going to click OK. You'll see I pop in right there. Now I am there. I can, if I want to straighten it out and center it, I can hit the center button and it will center it on the page. Now that video ask is there. And again, it plays very nicely with Kajabi. I would, if you're going to do this, when you're stacking up blocks, I you can mix it in with other text. I could have just as easily popped it into this text block. But what I find is especially, um, not just us as the you know master users, but if we're having other people work with us in our businesses, they can accidentally delete text unknowingly. And so if I'm putting in a piece of code, I like to keep it in its own space as much as possible. So here, I would just rename this and put in the video ask block. Now I can just drag it right there. It's just, it looks like it's part of the text block, but if someone's in here and they, you know, accidentally delete the whole thing, they haven't messed with my video ask. So that is just part of my CYA, um, cover your, you know what, I keep it in a separate block, but that is how you can put the video ask inside of email. Okay, so that is how you can embed it into an email. Works great. Now I'm gonna show you how you can do the widget, which will let you embed inside a product. Now, when you're doing the widget embed, you do need to have access to the code for it to work as intended. So that is what I'm gonna show you right now. All right, so this is a base Kajabi momentum theme, but it is one of Penny Clements, Penny in your pocket. It is one of her custom themes that I highly recommend. They're beautiful, they're easy to use. And the video ask, I embed it, or I add the widget. I should you get my terminology correct. How I, can ooh, I pause help? this? Please ask questions. There we go. Pause that. Uh, see, it's the how can I help video. Like I told you, I put how can I help anywhere that it will fit. So this can live in the product and you can change the location. You can change how it appears but it is very, very easy. And this way, if anyone is inside of any of your Kajabi products, if they have a question, they can just send it to you. They can send it to your team. Again, you can make these complex so that it is segmenting answers. I just want you to see that it's very easy and the different places that you can put this. So whether you were running a standalone product as a course, if you are running a recurring payment and a membership, this will fit right inside Kajabi. So the way that you do it, you go into the video ask, and just like we were on the first page, you always come back to the same spot. So it's very, to me, easy to get around. I come back, share and embed. So I'm gonna click this link, the one that I just showed you, that is the widget. And here is where you can put the CTA. So you can type in whatever you'd like. You can change the widget style. You can change its position and you can change the color. So it will give you a little preview down here in the right-hand corner. If I change this to the left-hand corner, you'll see it will move over. I can make it bigger in the left-hand corner and I can make it dismissible. Now, what it means by dismissible is it just goes away. So I'm not a big fan, if I'm putting it inside of a product, of making it dismissible because they might come back into that product six months from now and if they've dismissed the widget, depending on cookies and whatever it is that makes it fire it, that might just be 
gone. And so I don't turn on the dismissible part for myself when I'm putting it into a product. But I do choose this minimalistic look and depending on the theme that I'm using, you have to play around with that just a bit um, to make sure it's not covering up any of your sidebars or the video buttons. Um, you know, when videos are playing, that's all you need to be aware of. I like it in the lower left hand corner and this very unobtrusive to me little icon. Once you have that, you click get the code and you'll see their instructions, which are you need to put it between the body tags on the page. So if you click copy the code, now we're going to go into Kajabi and put that code inside. All right, so when you're on your product page, you want to come in and you're going to need to go into the code to use the widget. If you can't get into your code based on your plan, we're going to click edit the code. Under edit the code, you want to go into layouts, theme liquid, and always be careful when you are in your um, code that you know where you're going. This I know needs to go in between the body. So I'm going to paste the video ask in there. I'm going to click save. Now I'm going to hit preview. And there you go. It's right down here in the corner. So this will open up. We're going to have to pause it, <laughs> but it pops up just like that. People can reply so it can go anywhere you'd like it. Now, if you can't edit the code on your Kajabi plan, no fear, you can use it as a link. So in your header, in any of your navigation, in call to action buttons, you can just put it as a link. And while it won't have this same aesthetic appeal, it will still get the job done. So that is what um, I do with a lot of the products is putting it inside the product so that as people have questions, it's really easy for them to just ask the question right there and then you can reply or anyone that has access to your account can reply when it works for you. All right, there's one more way that you can use Video Ask and that is to embed. So if we go back to the Video Ask, again, we always come back to home base. Now we can choose embed. When you choose embed, this works really, really well because it is just iframe. So you can copy the code and then we can go back into Kajabi. And for this instance, I'm going to show you on a uh, landing page. So I'm going to open up a landing page. When you are putting embed code in, you are going to want a text block and similarly to how I explained on using it with email sequences, I would make its own text block just so it doesn't get deleted. So here I'm going to just rename this and I'll put video ask. And then we're going to click on the source code. We're going to get rid of this, put in the new code, click OK. You're going to see it pop up in just a second and voila. There it is. Now, the difference between this and we'll preview this one just so you can see it on the page. So here, when it's embedded, and this is a test site, so it's going to look a little, little different, it lives somewhere on the page. It lives in a section on the page. The difference between that and the widget is the widget can live in an area, but it's not confined to a section. So the widget, I always remember it like a widget floats, kind of like a wizard. It's a little magical or a little mystical. So widget, wizard, it literally like floats and magically appears. Whereas the embed, this lives. Like it has a bed 
in a house. So that's how I remember the two in my own brain and keep them straight. So you can use, again, what's gonna work with your Kajabi plan and then what is going to fit with what you are trying to accomplish. But those are the different places that you can put video ask into your Kajabi ecosystem. It also plays well with other tools. So like I was mentioning, if you are a Zapier um, friend, <laughs> user of Zapier, I am, I use Zapier as another member of my digital team. Here where it says connect to other apps, you can come in and you see all of the different places that you can connect video ask. So here, again, here are the connections with Zapier. Zapier makes you happier. And as you're using it, you get your get the feel of it, figure out what you want to do. Then, you know, it makes sense to branch out. Not a huge fan of branching out too soon because it's often too complicated. What you're trying to build, you don't really know where you are headed. So Hopefully that gives you a great foundation for video ask for how you might use it. Thank you so much for watching and I will catch you on the next video.